It is a truth universally acknowledged that any woman in possession of a good wardrobe must then be in want of pockets. But in all seriousness, ladies, gentlemen, and all variations thereupon, what is it with women's dresses and skirts and not having pockets, or worse, having fake pockets? Hashtag stop fake pockets. As corporations and fashion designers seem unwilling or unable to rectify this injustice, I suppose it's down to us makers to do it ourselves. Now, one of the first things to consider when putting your pockets into a dress is exactly where you're going to put the pockets. Your first instinct might be to put them in the side seam down here about where you normally have them for a pair of jeans or trousers or something. But that might not be the best solution. You see, a pocket, it's best to support over multiple areas because there might be something fairly heavy in there. And if you just sit it into a side seam, then what can happen is all the weight is on that seam. It's more likely to tear or pull the dress and change the way that it looks, the way that it falls across the body. So you really want to have it anchored at multiple points. And the best way to do that is to anchor it in to the waist seam. So if you have a side seam pocket, then where's the side seam? That back there. You want to uh, split down the side seam and put the pocket in, but high enough so that the top of the pocket can be stitched onto the waist seam so that the stitch is hidden in there and it takes the weight of whatever you've put in the pocket so that you're not ending up with it being pulled down on one side, the weight's evenly distributed across the top. Now for this dress, because it's a wrap dress and where the side seams sit will change depending on how my stomach changes, I'm going to do window pockets at the front, which will mean I need to decide whereabouts I want the pockets to sit, which is about there on my hips. And then we're going to have a extra bit of fabric which runs up to the waist seam so that all the weight's not in the front of the dress. A lot of it's taken up of the weight. Okay, so what we have here is ordinary Christmas wrapping paper. And the reasons we're using wrapping paper are twofold. Firstly, it comes with these little one centimeter squares all across it, which will allow us to um, better measure out whatever we're drafting. The other reason is that around January it becomes very cheap for some reason. So you can pick up quite a lot of it for next to nothing. So now that we've laid out the drafting paper, the question has to be asked, how big do we make the pocket? And the answer is, of course, big enough to fit your handy. If your drafting paper doesn't have these little squares on it, then use a um, tape measure or ruler. But if you place your hand down on, you can mark on exactly how far you need to draft your opening for your pocket. So I need a gap at least that large in order to be able to fit my hand in. And how deep do I want it? At least deep enough to fit my phone without it falling out. So it's going to have to be Lisa, and we want the pocket to come lower than the opening so that anything that's in the pocket won't just fall out as soon as we sit down, it'll get caught on this fabric. Now, if you were making a, a pair of trousers or jeans or something, this would probably be almost certainly a right angle. But because it's a dress or a, even a skirt, if you have a right angle here, it's probably not going to line up with your waistband because skirts tend to flare out, even a straight skirt will flare out somewhat to go over the hips. So you're probably going to want some sort of angle on there and rather than fiddling about trying to get the right angle so we can use a, this um, draft pattern again and again, what we're going to do instead is add an extra couple of centimetres or an inch over the top, which is the advantage of using the squares. I can see two centimetres there. So that when it comes to sewing in, I know that I can cut out the two centimetre gap there on any sort of angle I want and I can get it to line up perfectly and still have enough room for my hand and the part that's going to catch my phone. So we want the bottom to be rounded and you can use a French rule if you want to be fancy, but basically something like that would be a rough pocket shape. I'm gonna neaten this up and do it um, more exact, but basically that's what you want to do when you're drafting your pockets. It's always good to raid the cabbage patch when you have a small project like this. 
Now after folding the fabric in two we're going to pin the pattern to the front. And carefully cut it out so that we have two identical pockets. What I've marked on in red here is going to be where the opening is. So that's where my hand's going to go into the pocket. Uh, this bit round here, where all the pins are, is what's going to be sewn. So this is going to be the opening that's going to go in the seam. This is going to go across the um, waistband, just to uh, give it the extra bit of support. And that's curved, so that when you put things in, they've got this uh, bit of fabric here, that you can see things stop things continually falling out of the pocket. Now we're going to sew around the edges of the pocket with a strong zigzag stitch, leaving open only the opening for the hand. Right, drinking horn's going away because dealing with something this big, I know I'm going to knock it over. So, what we're going to do now is unpick the seam. This is the side seam for the skirt where the pocket's going to go with the opening. And this is the waist seam up here. So, we don't need to unpick this one, but we do need to unpick that. And we only need to go down as far as there. So, I need to mark that on with some tailor's chalk, but we're going to do it on the other side. So, on the inside, we need to open this part up where the two meet because we might go to want to secure the corner into this area where the side seam and the skirt meet and the top edge is going to be something that we just stitch that onto so that's just going to be stitched directly on and the opening is going to go once we've split this open, we'll have two empty flaps. One side will go to this side of the pocket, on there, and flip it over. That empty side will go to there, and we'll be able to sew that. So now let's mark on that and unpick. thing to double check at this stage is when you're attaching the top of the pocket to the waist seam that you're attaching it to the front because we want it to sit across the front of the body not behind so when you're attaching it in check the neckline for the label which is over on the opposite side so I know this is the front seam so that's where I'm going to sew So for this dress we're going to do a window pocket which is something I think the YouTuber Morgan Donner has made and there's a link in the top of the window for her video on her creating pockets. I'm going to do something similar but slightly different to her. Um, so what I've done here is, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up on YouTube but there's a blue chalk mark there which I've done in this chalk and that's the level I can put my phone into my pocket without having to stoop down bed and just slate or anything so I can stand up straight and get my phone into my pocket as well as take it back out again. So that's going to be the level of the opening and I'm going to need the fabric to be able to attach to the waistband up here because that's going to be the main anchor point. So I'm going to need to measure both the distance of my phone because I need my phone to be able to fit all the way inside and this is about the longest thing I'm going to put in the pocket. So that's going to be 34 centimeters there add an extra centimetre or two on so we'll do it to 36 just so we've got seam allowance and a little bit of wiggle room let's bring the wrapping paper back out it's going to be virtually the entire length of the wrapping paper that's the bottom down there and for the width I want the width of my fingers at the side of my phone so from there to about there 
that's going to be the opening, which means I need to go even wider than that. So, probably make sure two centimeters on each side, it's just under an inch. And let's draw on the design of the pocket, which is going to go down there. Now, measuring just to the opening of the pocket is roughly 19 centimeters, probably about there. So from this point, this is the top of the, um, this is where the opening of the pocket absolutely has to be. So going a few centimeters above that to allow space for the design. Then I'm going to taper in to a small point, which is going to be the point where we attach to the hem. We don't want to go too small at the top because we don't want to have the um, weight being pulled down on one singular point too much. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five centimeters. And then I'm going to slowly start tapering in. And you could do all this by eye, but, which is what I was going to do originally, but I want to be more accurate. Okay, so that's going to be the shape of the pocket. The pocket's actually going to start here, so I'm going to have this space. I'm going to take the centimetre seam allowance in. That space is going to hold whatever I put in the pocket, and this is going to be the area where I'm going to design on the opening. Now, when it comes to a window pocket, because the um, pocket itself, the design that you put on there, is going to be um, pulled down by gravity. If we have any points going up, so if I were to do a triangle on here, then because the gravity is pulling down this way, everything should sit fine. It should be stitched up there, that be stitched down there, the phone will go in behind, everything should work. But if I were to do it, turn it into, say, a Star Trek sort of um, Federation logo, it's a bit wonky, but so it's got a point going up, this isn't going to stay up because it's fabric. I'd need to really starch it in order to get it to point and then it's not going to sit properly as a dress. You'll end up with one of the Egyptian dresses, Egyptian skirts where it um, sticks right out in front of you. And that's not really what we want. So we have to limit any upward points. So anything pointing towards the head is going to have to be limited. The one that I got this idea from, the one in Morgan Dunner's video has a heart shape which is pointed downwards, which is perfectly fine. But I want to go for something a little bit different, a little bit more um, complex, because I want to do some embroidery with it, so I want some details. What I want is a leaf pattern. So the leaf's going to go well with the green, and I can embroider on some lot like, veins to the leaf or something. Like some veins of the leaf running down in embroidery. So we'll have a leaf going down there, that bit, this bit will be sealed off, so this is actually going to be the opening, so we don't have to worry about that plopping down. And that's going to be the size and shape of the pocket. Now because only the back fabric of the uh, pop pocket is going to be seen through, only this side needs to be the colour that I want. Anything down here, anything up here, and the sort of front back, so if this is the lining of the dress, anything that attaches to the inside hair, that bit doesn't have to be of the colour I want, but the backing material, the one that you see through, does. So if you haven't got that much scrap material to do the whole pocket like this, which I'm not sure that I do, then you can compromise by only stitching in that. And you'll find that if you're looking a lot of your jeans pockets, you'll find that the bit of the pocket that you can see from the outside actually does just have an extra scrap of denim sewn over and it's just white cotton behind it. So it's the same sort of principle. The fabric that we're going to see, we're going to use at the scrap material that's going to be the sort that we want to see, or maybe not even scrap material, but the rest of it can just be any old white, black, anything, as long as it's thin enough to make the pocket without making a dress bulky and isn't going to show through. And this is what we're going to end up with. So these are the two halves of the pockets. This is going to be the front part that you are not actually going to see because that's going to be pressed up against the surface of the dress. 
A word of warning, if you're using white, as any bra wearing person can tell you, white normally, well, white doesn't always hide behind a, uh, another fabric. So if you're going to use white, make sure that you've tested it against the fabric to ensure that it doesn't show through. And this is going to be the backing material. Now, if you were using a different colour material, if I was using the white for both sides, but I didn't want the white showing through, then this is what you'd do. You'd take a swatch of the material that you want and cut it two sides. I've printed up the edges with pink and shears and just done a zigzag and stitch, ar stitch around and the design should fit nicely in that space. You'll only see that. And I've just done it on this one, even though it's the same colour material for demonstration purposes and there's absolutely no chance I accidentally put a hole in the back of the material and needed to cover it because I don't have enough green material to do the whole thing. So <laughs> that's the reason I've done it, just for demonstration purposes. That will sit on there. What you might notice is this is where the leaf's going to go but it's rather small compared to the size of my phone. That's because this is with seam allowance. If I get the template you'll see that this is the inside of the leaf with seam allowance on there. Once you take the seam allowance out, you've got a, a larger gap, which is large enough for the phone and my fingers. But we're going to sew a little bit on the inside of that. And where we sew, where we put the stitch in, that's going to be the edge of the pocket. So when we turn it inside out to hide the seam, we'll sit on the further line and we're going to need to cut into the seam allowance in little lines which is what I've shown on here these lines we've cut in and that will allow us to turn a lot easier without um, catching hopefully it should all work well like that so next stage is going to be to sew this well first we're going to pin this part onto the front of the dress sew it on and then we'll start cutting holes to sewing the pocket onto the waist seam. I'm going to sew it on by hand as it's too complicated if it's even possible to do by machine and I'm going to use a back stitch because this will supply a very secure hold to the waist. Now when it comes to embroidering the design what we need to remember is to use as many vertical strokes as possible and to only ever go diagonally rather than horizontally. Because putting things into the pocket, you tend to put things down in a vertical direction, especially on a window pocket, which is at the front of the dress. So things are more likely to snag on any threads which are positioned horizontally. Vertical threads are the least likely to be caught and so using as many vertical threads as possible should ensure the longevity of the dress. And so there we have it, a dress with pockets. Now this is the basic dress with just the basic side so seam pockets, the simplest ones to do. Even though they were simplest ones to do, I still managed to slightly mess it up. You see this pocket, I've sewn in inside out. <laughs> see what you're supposed to do is sew in the opposite way around, so this seam is on the inside and then push it into the pocket. So I thought, let's just try and sew it in anyway. Attempted to sew it to the waist seam. And 
it didn't work obviously because there was no seam on the pocket to sew to so it's constantly put in the dress then I tried to unpick it and I may have made a bit of a hole <laughs> at the top of the uh, dress um, rather than trying to fix it now because I want this video edited to go up I've decided that I'm just going to leave it as it is and fix it later so I've got plenty of uh, space in there I can get my hands in I've already got a tissue in there without a runny nose, hay fever starting, and my phone, or my work phone at least, fits in. It's a slight overhang, but that's because this has got a chunkier phone case than my other phone, which is what I designed it for, but it does actually fit in. Now for the other dress, love magic. So this is the other dress, haven't had time to iron it because, again, need to get this edited and up, so you can still see the embroidery hoops when they were around the pockets but these are the pockets the leaf design for the window and as you can see hands fit in perfectly fine the left hand side pocket is made slightly smaller because it's the one that goes behind the uh, wrap on the wrap dress and so if I make it full length it half it would be hidden anyway so I've made it slightly smaller I can get my fingers in and I can put my phone in but I can't put my phone and my fingers in the other so in the pocket, I can get my phone and fingers in quite easily. I can reach my hand all the way down right past the wrist. So nice, concealed, don't add any bulk to the dress. But now there's absolutely no excuse not to have pockets in dresses because as you can see, it doesn't actually affect how the dress sits. You've got your pockets there, they're available, they even add to the design of the dress. There is absolutely no reason now for manufacturers to be making dresses without pockets. All dresses should have pockets, hashtags, update pockets, and get some sort of pocket quality. Please. Please. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.